Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today we're asking the question, is the Apple Podcasts app actually good now? And I'm sure some people have been using the app for years and love it. I know it's very, very popular. A lot of people use it, but I've always hated the app. I thought it was very bad in many ways, but I started using it over the summer in the iOS 17 beta, which is out today, and I kind of love it. <laughs> it's really weird. I wasn't expecting to love the app. I wasn't expecting to love the update. And I don't know if it's things they added this year or things that have just added over time and I haven't really noticed because I was so put off by it. But I really like the update. So today I'm gonna to take a look at the things that I think are really good about the Apple Podcasts app and then the things that just aren't so good and I would love to see improve over time. Okay, so the first thing that caught my eye was the now playing screen, which looks nice on its own, right? Nice and modern and everything. And you can sleep it at a good time. You can set the speed easily. I think the Q view is really nice looking. All looks really great. But where it really separates itself is in the custom artwork that shows can upload. So here's Decoder, which has its own kind of normal podcast art that you'd see in any other podcast player. But if we play this and bring up now playing, it's actually custom for Apple Podcasts. And this one I think looks really classy, really good. Uh, if we go to another show, I think Hard Fork does it. Yeah, so let's bring that up. They have their own custom artwork. And again, I just think these look really good. This show I think does not. So yeah, you can kind of like switch between and see. But some shows, when they do have this custom artwork, I think it's just absolutely fantastic. Looks really good. And it's a stupid thing. I know, how often are you looking at the screen? But sometimes I am, and it's really nice to see these kind of just elevated uh, views. These are all created by the podcasters themselves, by the way. They're not created by Apple. Um, the podcasters create them, upload them to their account and everything. And yeah, I just, just think they look great. Another thing I really enjoy about the Apple Podcast app is Discovery. It's showing me new shows that I haven't heard before, and I actually really enjoy. My favorite podcast of the year, actually, is The Redemption of Jar Jar Binks, and I had no idea this existed. No one in my social feeds was posting about it, but Apple Podcasts suggested it to me, and I loved it. Uh, it interviews Ahmed Best. It, inter it interviews a whole bunch of other people who are involved in kind of the let's say, poor treatment of him and the character and other people involved in Star Wars over the years, and talks about the journey there. It talks about fandom, Star Wars in general. It's just awesome. Uh, really great show, miniseries that aired this year. I'll put a link to that in the description so you can check it out. But other shows as well, like Search Engine is a really great show. It suggested to me the economics of everyday things. Um, what else? Uh, know Your Enemy is a really good show as well. So there's some really good shows that it's recommended to me that I haven't seen people I know talk about that I haven't seen recommended to me that these other third-party apps haven't suggested to me, but I really love them. And so I'm really happy with the discovery uh, of just new podcasts uh, when I'm curious for something new and I'm itching for something new to listen to. Apple Podcasts has done a really good job. Now, one thing that Apple's apps kind of struggle with, I find, is syncing things reliably and quickly. And I have big issues with this in the Apple Mail app, in the Apple Calendar app, but in podcasts, it works pretty great for me, actually. So I've had really good experience with syncing my progress through episodes. So if I'm listening on my phone, hit pause, then sit down at my Mac and open the podcast app to start listening there. It's always synced perfectly. It does a really good job of that, I find. Um, again, your mileage may vary, but for me, it's been really good. And then in terms of new episodes coming into the queue, it is great. It's at least as fast as Overcast has been for me. I turned on notifications for both Overcast and Podcast to see which one was getting new episodes quicker. And they were basically, it was basically a wash. They're getting them at basically the same time, which was great. And yeah, it's just never more frustrating than to know a new episode of a podcast you really enjoy is out, but your podcast app hasn't found it yet for whatever reason. It's really great that the Apple Podcast app, for me at least, has been really good with syncing episodes into my system when they're released and between my devices when I'm listening to them um, on the go. So syncing has been a real big win for me. Finally, we have the Apple Watch app, which is pretty darn good. Um, so the benefits of the Apple Watch app are it automatically downloads latest episodes of your subscribed shows uh, to the watch. So just in the background, you don't have to think about it so that if you go off without your phone and just have your watch, you can listen to a couple episodes offline, which is really nice. Um, and then I also like that it works over cellular. So if you don't have an episode downloaded that you want to listen to, uh, and you're off without your phone, or you don't have a, uh, yeah, you just don't have your phone with you, you can go ahead and stream it over cellular, uh, which not all of the other podcast apps do. Now, it's not all perfect. <laughs> there are some issues with it that I do find a little frustrating. Uh, the first issue is that a couple things that I go to a lot are a couple taps away, more taps away than I'd like them to be. Uh, the first is just my queue of latest episodes. So show me a list of all the episodes that I haven't played yet. Um, that's super easy in Overcast, Castro, Pocket Cast. You can just open the app and by default, it basically goes to that list. 
Uh, but in uh, Apple's podcast app, there's the home screen, there's the For You page, um, and then you have to go to library and then tap latest episodes, which is a couple taps away, not the end of the world, but it's never just going to open to that screen unless you just kind of like left it there. Another thing that's annoying are timestamps in the description. So I'd love it if every podcast did proper chapters, but they just don't. A lot of that that upload to YouTube especially will include timestamps to each section of the podcast. And in basically every other app I can think of, you can tap those timestamps to go directly to that point in the show. It's really nice, especially if you listen to long episodes where they don't uh, necessarily talk about a thing you are interested in all the time. You can skip to it by just tapping on those timestamps. But in the Pocket Podcast app, you can't do that. A little frustrating uh, that, that that doesn't work. Um, another thing that's frustrating is you can't easily import or export your shows. So every other podcast app supports OMPL exports and imports. So you can take your shows away from the app or bring them in from somewhere else. Apple's podcast app doesn't do that. You have to manually add your shows when you come to the app. And if you want to leave and go somewhere else, well, remember your list of podcasts and you have to go manually add them in the other app because there's no way to export a file that's just industry standard and can be imported into another app. Very frustrating. If there is a way to do that, let me know in the comments because I Googled it. I could not find this, um, but if it does exist, I would love to uh, post a correction in a pinned comment. But yeah, that's it. I really am surprised at how much I enjoy using the app. I think the beauty of the app in general, the UI in general makes it easy to kind of start using because you're like, oh, this is very nice. <laughs> but it's also just the reliability of it, the speed of syncing things into and between your devices. I just find it a really enjoyable way to listen to podcasts. Now, I'm looking forward to Overcast's long rumored redesign to see if that kind of uh, reduces the gap in kind of just beauty of using the apps. But until that comes, I'm going to be using the Apple Podcast app, which is not a thing I ever thought I'd say, but hey, here we are. Uh, 2023, it's weird. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.